Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm so happy that the uh, last presentation today is that so interesting uh, topic, optimizing the surgical treatment, in ulcerative colitis. I hope you will enjoy it. My name is Laura Toth. I'm a first year PhD student um, and I'm uh, interested in surgery, mostly in IBD patients, surgical therapy. This is why I choose this topic. My vision is to provide the best achievable therapy uh, to IBD patients and my mission is to contribute the clarification of uh, some questionable parts in the surgical ca care of IBD patients. Uh, for that, I uh, get a lot of help from my supervisor, Paul Miheller, and my SMS, SMS Anatrans, and of course, my co-investigator, Hajnal Székely. You can see my ongoing projects here, and I think we can move on the first one. Uh, the first project is investigating the impact of obesity on postoperative complications in ulcerative colitis. We started this project uh, in this September with Heine, uh, and uh, this is a systematic review and meta-analysis. Just a little bit about the background. The prevalence and the in incidence of ulcerative colitis is rel relatively high. Uh, the prevalence of ulcerative colitis is uh, around uh, 200 per 100 patient uh, person per year. About one fifth of these patients uh, will need to have a colectomy. Uh, the majority of these operations are uh, electives, so we can prepare for it. On the other hand, approximately the half of the UC patients are overweight or obese. Uh, and I think this is, this is interesting that there are a lot of uncertain effects of uncertainty about the effect of obesity on the postoperative complications. This is why our aim is to investigate this effect. For, the, uh, for this, we have the question whether obesity is associated with early and late postoperative complications in ulcerative colitis. We use the PICO framework for that where P is the adult UC patients undergoing colectomy. E and C are uh, different nutritional status, and the outcome, uh, the primary is early postoperative complications, and the secondary is the long-term postoperative complications. Our hypothesis is that obesity increases the rate of early and late postoperative complications in ulcerative colitis uh, uh, patients who are undergoing uh, surgery. And our clinical implication is that prehabilitation decreases the postoperative complications. We use the search key you can see here. Uh, it contains four domains. The first domain reflects the disease. The second one is for the sur uh, surgery. The third is, uh, uh, is in connection with the complications. And the last one is, uh, reflects to the nutritional status. We uh, conducted our search in three databases uh, and it results uh, 6,670 hits. From that, uh, at the end of the selection, five uh, articles remains uh, and uh, we wrote uh, to some uh, authors uh, to get more data. About the second topic, uh, this, uh, we uh, started the second topic in this November. This is uh, the comparison of the Hanson and stapled anastomosis in uh, uh, UC patients undergoing colectomy. Uh, we started uh, that uh, project with Hainal CK2 and the project student uh, Miklos Sárközi. Just a little reminder about, the, uh, about how common ulcerative colitis uh, is and uh, again, the one fifth of these patients will need to have a colectomy. Uh, it is important to know that ileal pouchanal anastomosis is a gold standard uh, surgery for UC patients. Uh, there's two big types of the anastomosis, Hanson and stapled anastomosis. Uh, and uh, we can see that there is a, a shift uh, from the Hanson to the stapled anastomosis from uh, 2000 or aim to investigating the impact, uh, the impact of Hanson anastomosis in the postoperative outcomes in comparison with stapled anastomosis in UC patients. 
our clinical question is whether Hanson anastomosis is associated with few or late postoperative complications in UC patients. We use for that the PICO framework. P is the UC patients undergoing proctocolectomy with ila pouchanal anastomosis. Uh, I and C are the different types of anastomosis, and the outcome is, uh, is the long term postoperative complications. Our hypothesis is that Hanson anastomosis is associated with fewer long term uh, postoperative complications uh, of uh, ila pouchanal anastomosis. And if we are right, uh, uh, we can decrease the potential inflammation and malignant transformation of the pouch. We have the search key, you can, sorry, uh, we have the search key, you can see here, uh, it has three domains. The first reflects to the disease, the second reflects to the um, surgical type, and the third one is uh, about the anastomotic type. Our preliminary search was conducted in three databases too, and uh, the results is uh, around uh, 4,000 hits. You can see here four key articles. Uh, you can see uh, the shift of the uh, anastomotic types uh, from the early years to the to nowadays, and. Uh, all of the articles I found are cohort uh, articles, and uh, um, there are uncertainties about the complications. I found the systematic review and meta-analysis from 2006, but from that there are a lot of new articles. And uh, I found the Prospero registration from uh, 2015, and uh, you can see here uh, the summary. We, uh, we plan to uh, submit the projects on the next summer. And uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Very beautiful presentation. Thank you so much. I have two questions. First is uh, regarding your first topic, why you choose the cutoff at 30 BMI? Why you don't want to take into consideration maybe the overweight population 25 to 30 BMI? And my second question is regarding your second topic, why only the late outcomes? Uh, I would be also interested in the anastomotic leakage and like the post-operative morbidities in the 30 days after surgery. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Uh, about the first question, we choose the uh, 30 uh, BMI as a cutoff because uh, uh, we choose this according to the uh, WHO classification. Uh, they defined uh, the obesity with that, and uh, we can't work with the uh, overweight patients because I think just the, just one uh, article mentioned uh, separately the overweight patients. Um, about the second question, uh, we would like to focus on the late postoperative complications because uh, early post the, uh, in connection with the early postoperative complications, there are a lot of confounders. For example, um, uh, as I see, um, uh, the ileostomy uh, has more effects to the early postoperative complications than the uh, anastomotic technique. And this is why we, we choose the late postoperative complications. But if we have enough data, we can, we can, do, uh, uh, we can investigate the, uh, the early postoperative complications as a secondary outcome. Congratulations. Uh, I would uh, have some comment uh, to the second topic that it's a uh, great surprise for me that there are centers in the world that they perform hands soon ileo anal anastomosis. It's unbelievable for me as a surgeon. And uh, I think you should investigate, uh, I think the most important, uh, the anastomotic leakage in this, in this uh, project. Uh, because you have to investigate it and I, I couldn't see it in the pi, uh, PICO, in the outcomes that there's, uh, is there any hands? Uh, uh, so I don't find uh, yes, the uh, 
the anastomic leakage. This is, I think, this is the most important thing. I think, and also the quality of life is is important. I'm sure that uh, the Hanson anastomosis, uh, uh, after Hanson anastomosis, there will be much much higher uh, uh, anastomotic leakage. I'm, I'm sure. So it, it's it important. So maybe it seems it could be good, but. Um, Tell the truth, I, I, I don't believe. We thought about that because um, uh, we thought about the uh, malignant transformation and uh, the inflammation of the, the calf, and uh, this is why we are, in our hypothesis, the hands soon has uh, fewer uh, late postoperative complications.